Welcome, everybody. Um, we're joined today by two Explore Learning um, representatives. Todd, who is joining us from a balmy 80 degree environment. So um, I expect some scorn from all of us <laughs> educators who are have buses canceled today. Um, it's it's minus 40 ish. Um, definitely someone like Jen Grant would have suffered through some indoor recesses today. <laughs> and Ray Dean, who is joining us from the spare oom, um, uh, a nod to the lion and the witch in the wardrobe. So we are on a tight time frame because we've done and taken a one hour workshop and put it into 30 minutes. So I'm going to pass it right over to you guys. And thank you for being here. Um, and we'll have some questions at the end, but, um, educators from KP, please feel free to grab the chat. Um, and uh, ask questions, and Todd and Radine will keep an eye on that as well. Yes, well, welcome. It's super exciting to be here with you, and I'm I'm so sorry for your uh, your temperature adjustment that you have to go through today. But um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, real quick. I, I know we've got a very brief meeting, but just so that you know my background, that might help you and, and help me with you. So my name's Todd Underwood. I'm coming to you live from the Republic of Panama. I left here. I grew up here. Uh, was born and raised here. And in uh, 1989, I got my degree in marine science. I also worked for four years with the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute and uh, was able to do that. Um, went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Some of you might have vacationed there and uh, started there in 1989, got my degree. And uh, 1997, I started teaching high school science. And so that's been fantastic. Around the year 2000, I started piloting gizmos for our district. And we, and as a science department, we loved gizmos. And then the math teachers heard about it. They wanted it, middle school and elementary school teachers. And so this whole time in the district where I was teaching, we uh, had been using gizmos. And then the last couple of years, I started uh, helping other teachers learn about gizmos. And the last three years, I've been teaching in an online environment. I have currently three chemistry courses and a physics course and uh, teaching every day, just teaching from here and, uh, and excited to share gizmos with you. So let's jump into this and we'll go ahead and get started. We do have lots of different types of trainings that we do offer. There's a uh, um, in, intro, expanding, and pedagogy-focused workshops, but all of them are meant to take teachers through those four stages of instructional adoption, that blue arrow that you see across the bottom of your screen there. And so the first one, just teachers in the front of the room kicking off a lab activity or a lesson with students. Integration, that's going to be uh, both teachers teaching from the front of the room with gizmos, but then also if you've, everybody hopefully has an account, uh, has already played around with gizmos and explored a little bit. And you can see that every one of them has a student exploration guide. So in integration stage, students are using the student exploration guides and following along uh, pretty, pretty close adherence to those. Transformation, teachers are creating um, modifications, sorry, to those uh, student exploration guides to meet, you know, very precise uh, needs of expectations and uh, student needs and then the invention stage is where teachers create their whole new lesson materials to address very specific instructional needs but today we're going to learn how to operate the site you're going to become a gizmo student and i know we've got math and science in here um, show you how to give student access to gizmos and we're going to collaborate and have some fun so this workshop is going to move us from that adoption stage into the integration stage but at the end my goal for you will be that you'll be working throughout you know even if when, once we leave that you'll take time and create a lesson that goes right with a gizmo for something that you're going to be teaching students hopefully within the next two weeks briefly you guys um what do you guys normally use google meets is that true Using Google Meets, I see Michelle's yeah. shaking her head, yes. Yeah. And do you have Google Classroom or some other platform that you use to uh, yeah. share information to students? Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And we have, we have uh, almost 100% adoption of Google Classroom, so they're very okay. adept with it. All right, for, for years I taught with Google Classroom. Um, and uh, so I'll give you some ideas about, about doing that as well. So these are the gizmos of virtual meeting norms. And I think the big thing is, uh, man, there's so many different ways to use gizmos. I'm learning all the time and have been using gizmos with my students the entire time, 
even now in a more importantly in a virtual setting and I think that's going to be really helpful for you and your teachers but just keep your mind to open to new ideas and then wherever you are if you're at home at school wherever you know put a little note on the door say hey we got important math and science training going on here so that uh, don't disturb stay engaged and attentive throughout our training this will be very brief today I'm going to share lots of resources at the very end um, and I'll just mention a couple of them as they pop up a quick start guide for extra help. There's a question mark on every page and that's going to help you. We have remote learning gizmos with tips, a parent guide that you can that you can send to parents using gizmos from home. So gizmos, what is it? You know, what are your ideas about gizmos? I've already kind of given you the definition, but what are some thoughts that come to mind when you hear the word gizmo? So go ahead and type those into the chat and um, and I'd appreciate that if you would do that. So go in there and and chat away. All right, Michelle says interactive activities. Redeen is a thingamajig. Um, well, welcome. You know, uh, I'm a child of the 80s. Maybe you figured that out. So I always think of don't feed them after midnight and don't give them any water, right? So I think of gremlins. But gizmos, yeah, these are, these are interactive simulations. And really what gizmos are is they're online simulations for math and science. They power inquiry and understanding. They're interactive, they're visual, they provide great subject matter depth, and they encourage students to uh, explore and to dig into inquiry. And um, really the goal of Gizmos is to help students develop these conceptual understandings in both math and science. And students have fun uh, learning with them and they like to work with them and teachers have fun using them to teach. Now we're going to sign up for uh, attendance for our, our, our session. And I'm going to put in two links here real quick into our chat. One is to this link. You can also use your phone, a QR code. I want you to come back in here. And then the next thing you'll see here is a PD event number. And it's going to ask you for your first and last name, email address, school where you teach, um, grade level, and then this PD event number. So that's right here on the screen, 000 You're gonna get an email. I want you to go back later, check your email. If you don't see it right away, it's gonna be from your implementation manager. You'll see, um, if you don't see it, go ahead and check spam or, or junk email and see if it ended up in there. But there is a, a uh, survey monkey link uh, for today's training and I'd appreciate it if you could fill that out for me as well. So in the chat, just type the letter R for ready. We're gonna just try to keep things fast today. R for ready, if you've already signed up for, um, for attendance. Radine is ready. All right, good job, Radine. But there's no teacher left behind, so we'll make sure that everybody gets their little R into the chat. All right, Kathleen's good to go. All right, Jennifer's ready. Deborah, how's it going? Who else? Elizabeth. I'm doing okay. All right, good job. All right, we're going to move forward, and I'll just go uh, through and just show you some things. This is just a, a an image of some students up on the stage and some uh, some parents, maybe teachers watching and, and checking things out. And so the main thing here I want you to see is um, there's we're going to do a model lesson here, but we don't have any little people to experiment with. So I need you. I need you to be my uh, students for today. And um, and so we're going to jump in here. Can you guys be my um, my 10th graders today? Would you be a 10th grade student with me? We are. We're middle school. How about let's do eighth grade? Will you be an eighth grade student with me? All right, Michelle's in. If you're willing to be a student, just let me know. Um, go ahead and open up, if you haven't already, uh, your login to Gizmos. And what I'd like you to do is have that tab ready. Keep this Google Meet um, tab open. And then a Google Doc, just a blank Google Doc, any 
any clean document that you would like to be able to copy and paste in. So we're going to jump into a quick lesson. I want to model this for you. We're going to come back, talk about best practices, and see how you could use this with your students. So let's jump in here. And this is um, math and physical sciences, physics. We'll, we'll take care of this here. All right, here we go, class. Are you ready? All right, let's jump in here and do this. Help. Todd, oh, yes. I, so Elizabeth. when you like log into Gizmos, like I had an account from before, which was not my K-12 account. Is this what I'm supposed to be using or are we supposed to be in um, some school login? Your, your account. So Michelle's shaking her head yes. So jump on the mic, Michelle. Tell us what, what we need to know there. Um, I think that uh, Elizabeth that, or Beth, if you um, had an account previously, it will let you log in with that K-12 or KPDSB. Are you, are you in? Oh yeah, I am in. It just, um, it's like the free account that only has access to like one lab. Um, okay, we can, fix, we can fix that. Okay. okay. All right, so she'll take care of that for you, um, Elizabeth. So don't worry about that, Michelle. You're in good hands for Michelle. And um, you can just follow along on my screen and yours and as long as you can have access to the to the gizmo. So let's jump in here and we're going to look here. Students, welcome. We're going to look at a distance time graph metric gizmo today for our lesson. And in the chat, can anyone tell me what um, what will I find if I take the, the, the rise over the run? What formula do I get if I have the change in y over the change in x? What information could that possibly give me? Rise over the run, what's that going to give me? Slope. Slope, that's right. And if it's distance divided by time, what will our slope become? What variable would I be finding if I have distance divided by time? Speed. Just curious. if Speed, Michelle says. Speed. <laughs> yes, good job. No, that's fine. So class, remember, whenever I uh, open up my gizmos, I go into full screen mode. And so I want you to be able to see that. And so I want you to make a prediction in the chat or turn your microphone on. That might be easier, faster. Tell me, how will the runner run according to this graph? So you see the graph on the screen. Tell me, use your keen observation skills. Any, no detail is too small. Share with us and the group. What will happen? What should I expect to see the runner run if he runs according to this graph? And I'm, we're going to run the runner in when I click on the green button down here in just a second. All right, Michelle says a steady pace. Go ahead, Radine. You were started to say something. Um, just a steady pace. He's, he's even keel. All right, even keel, constant speed there. Yeah, constant pace. Jennifer, good job, Michelle, forward only. Let's go ahead and see if we're correct. So there we go. And then Kathleen says he's gonna run uh, 10 kilometers per second. It's actually meters here. So we're gonna, it's 10 meters in um, per second. We're gonna go 40 meters in one second. Let's run, let him run again. Now, if you had some video lag, that's okay. I'm gonna, trust me, he did run at a constant speed and he does run according to the graph. All right, let's look at another one class. Tell me, what do you see happening or should expect to see happening here? So make your prediction in the chat. What should I see? How is this graph either similar or how is it different from my other graph? What should I expect to see here? Go ahead and, and turn on your mic and share or, all right, so Kathleen says 20 meter mark and then back. All right, speeds up and slows down. Sugar high, all right. Uh, forward then back to the starting line. Let's go ahead and check it out and let's see what happens here. So let's see, he's gonna run. Oh, he's going to run the full 40 meters and back in the same time. Let's go ahead. Let's do it one more time so you can see that. So two seconds to get to the 40 meters and then two seconds to get back. Now let's analyze this first section. Tell me what is happening with the runner here in this first section, just between zero and two seconds. What can, I, what can we describe about his motion here? What's going on in that first part of the graph? Which way is this, this person running? 
All right, it, uh, Jennifer says, constant pace forward. If you agree with Jennifer, type the letter A in the chat. You support Michelle or Jennifer and you're like, yes. Um, and Michelle also forward and steady pace. If you agree with them, your classmates, go ahead and put an A in there. All right, thank you for responding there. Now let's, let's talk about that real quick. So we've got um, some evidence here from the graph that tells us that he's moving forward. What evidence? do I have from the graph that he's moving forward? How do I know that he's moving forward? What evidence to support that claim? Can't just take your word for it. How do I know from the graph? All right, we got an uphill slope, increasing in distance. Yeah, we actually have an increase in distance and an increase in time. And we have, when we have both, increase in distance and increase in time, we're gonna say that we have a positive correlation or a positive slope. Let's look at the last two seconds, two to four, and what? tell me about the motion here. What's our runner doing here from two seconds to four seconds? I'm using the little time slider here to... Yep, so I'm just clicking and dragging that green line going from two to four seconds. What's, tell me about the motion here. All right, we got, we, Elizabeth says we got a negative correlation. All right, so we've got the runner running backwards and then our evidence that he's running backwards is what? What's the evidence? We've got constant speed back to the finish line. Yeah, that's true. We'll see that um, we're going back to the zero uh, meter distance, back to zero. So our distance is decreasing, but our time is increasing. So that's how, how we'll say that we have a negative correlation or a negative slope. Okay, here's another one. I want you to make a prediction. Did we let him run? Let's let him run, come on. I, don't, I can't remember if I let him run or not. There he goes, there and back. All right, here's my next graph. Make a prediction in the chat. Tell me what's going on here. Write down your observations there in the chat, or if you want to share uh, on your mic, you can. It's Radine says it's a suicide run. Some of my students, Radine, would say that, hey, that's Mr. Underwood's run. I saw him this morning. He started running really fast and then he stopped. He must have been thinking, why am I running? Nobody's chasing me. And then started walking back to his house, then stopped, contemplated, no, he could do this. And he finished strong and ran the race. Yeah. So Michelle says he runs, stops, returns uh, back, then stops and then runs again. So let's let him run. Check him out, see how he's going. All right, let's do it one more time. In the chat, can you uh, tell me what new feature uh, we have on this graph that we haven't had on a graph yet? What's the new feature that we have here? Yeah, we got the flat line, that horizontal section. So um, we now have that horizontal line. That's going to be our new slope. It's zero slope or no slope. And so we can see that there. Now I'm going to give you a challenge. And what I want you to do is uh, let me model a couple of things for you. So, so here we can change our number of points. And for this next challenge, you're going to have to have at least seven points. You can also highlight that and just change the number if you want to do that. But you're going to have to check all the boxes. So show graph, show animation for both because we want to have two runners. You can click and drag these up. And when you're done doing what you need to do to create a race, an amazing race, I want you to use the snapshot feature. So up here in the top right is a camera. And when I click it, it processes a screenshot and then I can right click, copy the image and paste it. So that's why I had you already open up a Google Doc. So you should be ready with that. And then um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a race, take a snapshot. You can use a snipping tool if you want, paste that into your document and then start writing a story about that, about that uh, race in your Google Doc. Now let me pull over the assignment. So the assignment is, I want you to design an exciting race between two runners with at least seven points. 
I want you to take a snapshot of the graph and paste it into the Word document and begin writing a detailed news story about the race. And we're going to say that this was a race that happened this past Saturday, February 6, 8 a.m., starting at the Golden Learning Center on Mine Road. And you are a roving reporter for the Northern Sun News. And you're going to give us a detailed report about this story. And so that's your assignment. You're going to go ahead and I'm going to give you a minute to go ahead and uh, create your graph. And I'm also going to give you a direct link to that gizmo so you don't have to search for it. And so that is in the chat. And um, you can click right on there, create your graph, and create your story there. Uh, for your roving report. I'm going to give you a minute because I know you want to go in there and play around and just at least start your story. So I know we're limited on time and the bell's about to ring, but I'm going to start my timer here and I'll just give you a warning and, and keep you give you a heads up when you should be doing different things. Now for those of you who can't get into gizmos right now, if you want to use the race that's on the screen, you can go ahead and type a story there and use that graph. You can take a, a snipping tool shot of, of my screen and my graph and create your own story on my, off of my graph. So I'm going to give you another 30 more seconds to get in there and, and slide some things around and create that race that you want. And then I'm going to give you a minute to start, start your story. All right, everybody should have a graph and go ahead and use that snipping tool. Go ahead and, and copy and paste that, that screenshot into your Google Doc and then just start typing your story. Now, here's the, here's the deal. Your story can be as detailed and ex extravagant as possible as you want, but your story has to be supported by the evidence in the graph. So it has to be true to the graph. Okay, let's go ahead and stop there and uh, come back as teachers in our training. And let's talk about just some best practices. Just want to share that with you. So, so tell us um, what were some best practices that you saw there with our, with our um, assignment that we just did and, and modeling that. And can you see yourself using this simulation with your students for any kind of topics there? So go ahead and, and tell me what were some best practices or things that, that were good teacher things to do that you saw. Feel free to turn on your microphone because that's gonna might help speed things up. All right, so the use of keywords. Yeah, we were, we were uh, integrating vocabulary. Uh, what were some other things that we did? You engaged us by getting us to a reply in the chat bar just with short little, uh, you know, letters or something. Yeah, that's a, a good way, a technique to keep everybody involved and kind of see who's still breathing, right? Uh, make sure that everyone's still paying attention, no one's snoring. Um, so using those visuals, really helping students see those things. Now, uh, are you guys allowed to use Flipgrid or web something? Do you guys have some something that students can video themselves and share with others? with the class? Uh, some teachers are using Flipgrid and then we have like Screencastify licenses okay. and students can um, record like on a, like a couple different workarounds for sure. Okay, so um, some other extensions on this could be uh, having students start the story and then time it every two minutes, change to a new person continuing to write on that story so they can share a document and then rotate and then uh, do that maybe three times and then come back to the original or owner and have them wrap it up and, uh, and then share those stories with each other as a class. So that might be a fun thing. Or to create some graphs and assign these to students in Google Classroom, just to different students and say, I want you to go out and do a visual representation of this graph that I gave you and have them videotape themselves 
do, running out the graph that you created for them. And some can be more challenging the, than others and uh, then having them share those on Flipgrid. So those are just some other extension ideas for that. And, and so let's jump in here, um, you know, just some other best practices, uh, you know, getting students to think about those what if making predictions, using vocabulary, and then allowing students to, to create and jump in and use those gizmos. So I'm gonna let you think about uh, expectations that you have coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, for remote learning, and you guys can plan a lesson after that. But I, what I wanna do is show you some ideas in here and gizmos. So what is in here? You have ways to find gizmos and set up classes. So the first thing I would say is you start with your name, set up your accounts, go to my homepage and create a class. It's super easy. As a middle school teacher, you might be teaching the same subject multiple times. I would say start with one class, build it out, add gizmos into it, and then add a new class. Um, so it's very easy. Since I already have my first block one, I'm gonna go ahead and make a second block class of chemistry. And that's how easy it is to create a class. Each class has its class enrollment code. I'm in a Google Meet meeting with my students and I say, hey, we're signing up for Google Classroom today. And here, or for, uh, sorry, Gizmos today. And here's our class enrollment code. I also can use the student enrollment handout and put that in my class info section in Google Classroom. And so students have access to that three quick steps to sign up for the class. And then you wanna add gizmos. So here it tells you how to do it. You can also go over here, go by academic standard, scroll down and switch to country for Canada, and then go over here by province and choose Ontario. And then you'll see the different math and science standards that you might wanna add to your class. So I'm just gonna click here, 11th grade chemistry, university prep, Boyle's law, add it to the class. Which one? Chemistry second block. And there it is, it's added to my class. And here I can now add a heading according to my syllabus, like I did here in this class. I created uh, headings according to my syllabus and then I added one to four gizmos per. And the reason I said as a middle school or high school teacher to do that all in one is because then you can come over here and import the gizmos and choose where, where to import it from, and then they all come in here. The trick here is to hide the ones you don't want students to see yet. And then once you have them in there, you can come over here to your class, you can manage your class roster, you can also see student results of the five assessment questions that are with every gizmo and get a heat map uh, for that. And let me come back here to our distance time one. I used a feature called um, presets, throughout our gizmo that you can you can see here once you launch your gizmo you can create your own preset so you can have stuff ready to go that's really good with a virtual environment and then underneath are five assessment questions they get harder as you go down the list uh, for students but every gizmo has these lesson info there's a word documents for three of these there's an x answer key don't share that with anybody we have a teacher guide vocabulary sheet and then the google doc this is great because it also has a link directly to the gizmo in the title and you can easily cut and paste you know get cut out whatever you don't want so that you can center in on the expectations that you'll be teaching for that lesson a lot of times i do start with the teacher guide as a pdf so that i can see the lesson plan who um, some suggested gizmos that go with that activity that I chose. And um, it has some scientific background or math connections and I can give those as readings to students in Google Classroom before they attempt the, the lesson. Okay, Whew, that has been a lot of information. And the main thing I wanna be able to give you here is some resources. So make sure that you uh, open these up as I put them in and then after the training, what you can do is you can go back and copy, make co your own copies of some things. So here is the list of, from our, our Google Drive of all of the different um, things that you might have seen pop up on the screen, other resources to help you in your planning and uh, also a link to the online quick start tutorial for teaching with gizmos that I wanted you to be able to see. So the main things here is uh, understand, let's get to the end here. 
Um, and these are all other things that you can do to start with your planning is to make sure that you know that you can uh, jump in there under my homepage and have access to lots of great resources from blogs to webinars, claim evidence, reasoning prompts and task card information. We have lesson planning guides. A whole other training you can take is STEM cases and you can do a search for STEM case. These are where students take on the role of a STEM professional and they help solve a real world problem. Enzyme STEM case, veterinary technicians, and then uh, they have to help a dog that's been eating normally, but then all of a sudden starts losing a lot of weight. So I've shown you how to do your student enrollments, uh, assessments, there's five on every page. And uh, do you have any questions as we wrap things up? And I'm sorry, I went a minute over. I'm gonna go one more minute over, but any questions? Um, the main thing is that you've learned a lot. Go ahead and experiment. Get in there. Find your groove with teaching with gizmos. I've been using them. I use them all the time, even in tutorial sessions with students. So uh, know that you have access to everything that's inside gizmos. So you don't think that, oh, I'm a math teacher. I can't see science stuff. Or oh, I'm a science teacher. I can't see math. You have access to everything to provide to your students. The main thing is you have to add them in to your class to be able to see student results. If you don't care about student results for something, like you might have something, some kid doing remediation, just give them a direct link and say, hey, go, go do unit conversions and then come back and let me know if you have any questions. But plan it out, don't be afraid to fail, S just start and then have fun uh, teaching, um, teaching with gizmos. Think about what worked and what didn't work. Think about our next type of training that you might be interested in, uh, expanding the gizmos experience. But yes, there's also French lesson materials. So a lot of the um, materials are in French and, it, and I'll show you where to find that real quick. You go to my homepage, go to On Demand PD, and then Remote Learning PD Resources. Let me give you that as a link here in the chat as well. Uh, so that's a good question. Thanks, Kathleen, for asking that. And once you get here, you'll scroll down to shared gizmos list and then you'll find resources over here that are for different topics. A AP and IB, uh, CER um, task cards and then gizmos that are, um, we have Spanish and French. Uh, gizmos. So those those will be in there and I just can't don't see that. But that's where you would go to find that. And thank you so much. That wraps up our training. You guys were fantastic. I appreciate you guys being students with me today and I hope you had fun. Share your stories with each other later and then get in there and then start um, exploring gizmos, create your class, add them in, add gizmos in and then uh, download all those lesson materials so you can start planning your gizmos. Thank you, Todd. You did such a great job. We will forgive you for being in a warmer location. That is, you know, very gracious of us. <laughs> you, you know what? We wanted to I'm, here. I'm sending the warm <laughs> thoughts your way. Just tap into the sun. Here it goes. It's been sunny all day. Here you go. Enjoy. Thank you. We wanted to, you know what? We wanted a glimpse of the potential of the product and what we needed to do to get started. And you have done that for us. We see what we can do with it. We see how much it'll engage our students and how as an educator, the interface is pretty user friendly. So we can get in and start to play with it without having any fear of things, you know, wrecking or um, anything like that. So you gave us good advice on the end. Um, the, 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 this is recorded for us to come back to, but um, thank you so much. Um, to everybody who's on right now, I'll just quickly mention Todd will be back on Thursday. So if you know somebody who's interested in this, um, just have them log in and um, listen in on Thursday as well. So, uh, those are the only two sessions for this product for this year. So thanks everybody and thank you Todd so much um, for teaching us today.